And joining me live now, Democratic Congresswoman Jackie Spear of California, the vice chair of the new Congressional Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. Uh, Congresswoman, thank you so much for your time. Uh, since you are on this task force, I would like to start off with the president's comments on uh, gun control legislation. He says later this week we'll hear more specifics. But as I mentioned, you have the NRA saying that they are doubtful that any legislation, at least involving banning assault weapons, would make it through Congress. You have survived being shot five times in the 70s when you were a congressional aide. So you have this dual, I guess, tract, if you will, as a survivor of gun violence and a member of Congress. The president said that members of Congress have to weigh their conscience. What do you feel of that remark from him today? Well, I think it's a very profound remark and apt. Um, I would also worry that, uh, in fact, this Congress is incapable of passing an assault weapon ban. That doesn't mean we shouldn't try and work very hard to achieve it. But there's many things we can and must do to make our streets and our classrooms safer. And that includes making sure that we have responsible gun owners, that we have responsible dealers, and that we are responsible as policymakers. We have a, a criminal background check that that is riddled with holes right now. You go to a gun show in most states and there is no background check. Uh, we don't have all the files on that database because it's voluntary for the states to provide that information. If you are a stalker, if you are a terrorist, uh, you are not on that database. So there's much that we have to do in terms of making sure that these guns do not find, their self, find themselves into the hands of the wrong people. Beyond that, the dealers, um, most of whom are law-abiding, there's a small percentage that are not, and yet they are still selling guns and they're selling them to people who end up um, being in a situation where they are part of a, a crime later on. Congresswoman, we know that the vice president held a series of listening sessions with people from both sides of this debate on, on what to do next. And, and we also know that in the last election cycle, millions of dollars, somewhere around 20 million, uh, contributed by the NRA or spent by the NRA to keep its influence alive and well. And I want to play what the president said in this news conference regarding the politics of all of this in the midst of us marking one month to the day that those children and teachers were killed. Uh, my starting point is not to worry about the politics. My starting point is to focus on what makes sense, what works. Uh, what should we be doing to make sure that our children are safe, uh, that we're reducing uh, the incidence of gun violence. And I think we can do that in a sensible way that uh, comports with the Second Amendment. Um, and then members of Congress, I think, are going to have to have a debate and examine their own conscience. Because you know, if, in fact, and I believe this is true, everybody across party lines was as deeply moved uh, and, and, and saddened as I was by what happened in Newtown, uh, then uh, you know, we're going to have to vote based on what we think is best. We're going to have to come up with uh, answers that set politics aside. And, and that's what I expect Congress to do. We've heard a ton of ideas regarding mental health, some of the ideas you just noted as well. What is the urgent, most important first step that you would like to see from the president or hear from him this week? I think the most important uh, first step is to make sure that we have a comprehensive database, that we are doing criminal background checks on every gun that is purchased. Uh, California has one of the strictest laws in the country, and yet guns are still coming into the state because they can be brought from out of state. The importation of these guns as well. Um, there's a definition that says they have to be for a sporting purpose. Well, the AK-47 is not for a sporting purpose, and yet they're being imported willy-nilly into this country. There are, as I said, 18 million of these guns, and maybe even more, already in the marketplace. Let me transition to the debt ceiling. Uh, the president, obviously, again, uh, I believe, taking on Republicans, and at least the assertion, in his opinion, that the American people being held hostage here. But let me get the latest reaction to you from Speaker Bain addressing the president. He says the House will do its job and pass responsible legislation that controls spending, meets our nation's obligations, and keep the government running. And we will insist that the Democratic majority in Washington do the same. Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell also issuing this statement, saying the president and his allies 
need to get serious about spending, and we look forward to working with him to do something about this huge, huge problem. Are we headed to a shutdown? Uh, I worry that we are, and, and I must say that, um, in fact, the president is right. We have already incurred these debts. These wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have cost us dearly in lives and in treasure. And the fact that they're willing to shut down this government because they're going to use uh, the debt ceiling as a way to extract more in terms of spending cuts uh, will be the death knell. And I think it will be the death knell of the Republican Party uh, in Congress if they do this. The American people are fed up with our inability to just do the right thing. We have an obligation to pay our debts, just like we have a personal obligation to pay our credit cards. That's what the president's talking about. And if the Republicans are basically saying, we're not gonna pay our credit cards, well, they're turning into deadbeats, and they may be um, you know, publicly uh, uh, impugned because of it. Thank you very much, Congresswoman Sphere. We greatly appreciate you joining us. And Thank now, you. let me bring in our News Nation.